It's undeniable that regeneration has been an absolute staple of Doctor Who, a term that has meant that the longest running sci-fi show has been able to exist for 60 years, and now, with the return of David Tennant as a 14th Doctor in what is perhaps the most bizarre and confusing regeneration we've ever seen, I thought it would be fun to go through each regeneration and explore what makes a regeneration so fascinating. So, go and grab yourself your cup of tea or coffee or whatever your drink of choice, just as always, and we'll run through it. Hello everyone, welcome back. I usually do these kind of things on a Sunday. I haven't posted for a couple of weeks because the old, uh, the old throat's been tickling me a little bit. I've had a little bit of a cold, which is ridiculous because I literally had one like three or four weeks ago, so God knows what's happening there. But I thought I would give you a nice little midweek video instead for two reasons actually. One of which is because I'm going to be geeking out to the absolute fullest on Sunday when I'll be at MCM. So if you are there, make sure you say hello. I will always say hello back. And uh, yeah, we can have a good old net air about things. The second reason though is because I decided for whatever reason, like a lot of you did, to go back and watch all of the regenerations and re-watch a few episodes as well while I was there, just to, you know, sort of bring myself up to speed with uh, with what's been going on so far. And of course, we've seen now, or if you haven't, then you've been living under some sort of rock, um, but we've seen David Tennant come back as the 14th Doctor in what I think I said before is probably the most confusing and bizarre regeneration we've ever had. So I thought that it would be a really fun idea just to sort of get into that and uh, maybe do a little bit of a ranking. I haven't done a ranking in about a year and a half, maybe. <laughs> maybe even a bit longer than that. God, who, who knows? But whilst I've got you here, if you could do me a little favour and click on that lovely little subscribe button, that would be awesome. At the time of recording, I am on 831, so we are so close to the 1000 goal that I've got at the minute, which I wanted to have I said at the start of 2024, but I think we can do it just before then. Make my Christmas. In fact, make my birthday. My birthday is on the 29th of December. Let's get to a thousand before the 29th of December for my 29th birthday. Oh my God. It's happening. <laughs> I've been really, really appreciative of the sort of support that I've got since I started this whole thing back up. So yeah, if we can get a few more of you guys, I'd love to be able to meet some more of you. So if we can do that, that would be wonderful. But you're not here for me to ramble on, well maybe you are, who knows, but without any of this sort of preamble that I usually do. So, as I said at the start, grab yourself something to drink or eat or whatever you decide to do when you watch these videos and let's have a chat about the thing that has kept our show alive for the past 60 years. Regenerations. Let's do it. Just one thing I completely forgot to say as well before we do start is that I will be going from worst to best. I won't be commenting on the performance of the Doctor or any part of their story-ish, but you'll you'll see what I mean. <laughs> it will be really just about that regeneration scene and what makes it so good, or maybe not so good. Who knows? We'll um, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm sure. Though so unfortunately, it is, and it is kind of with a heavy heart that I have this one at the bottom. But my reasoning, I think, will make a lot of sense, and that one is the regeneration from. Colin Baker to Sylvester McCoy. In a story that I actually quite like, oh no, I said I wasn't going to talk about stories. Forget what I said, move on. <laughs> oh boy, what do we say about this one? I mean, I am completely aware of what was going on behind the scenes, or at least from what I've read, I'm aware anyway. So I know that Colin Baker wasn't exactly down to film the regeneration, and I guess that's kind of fine, but for me, it's more that I feel like Colin Baker's doctor deserved more if you know what I mean. And certainly a hell of a lot better than Sylvester McCoy in a wig. I think to have a regeneration where it's sort of flipped over and it is just the new Doctor in a wig, you know, I just can't really get past it. And that's a shame because if I could forgive all that, if you could forgive all that, if we all collectively could forgive all that and we had a better production value, I'm about to contradict what I'm saying. This is going to happen a lot in this, okay? So you're just going to have to sort of stick with me. But what I mean is I would love to see a regeneration that was a complete surprise because I'm sure, you know, him being flipped over and the new Doctor already being there was like, okay, cool, I could get on board with this. And it's something I could totally do. For example, if we were to go back to Peter Capaldi's regeneration into Jodie, what I would have loved, I think I've said it before as well, is that we had a 
sort of mid-air regeneration. So I would have loved it if Peter Capaldi, or 12, however you refer to him, fell out of the TARDIS, and then you know how there's a shot that goes back to the TARDIS dematerialising? Then it went back to the shot, and it was actually Jodie's Doctor that was the one falling. Does that make any sense? I hope it does, but I, I know what I mean. Basically, if we had 12 starting to regenerate, but then fell out of the TARDIS, or, well, the TARDIS kind of just chucked them out, didn't they? But we had 12 regenerating at the start, thrown out of the TARDIS, cut back to the shot of the TARDIS, doing its thing and getting the hell out of there, and then going back, and then the one you, the one you see is a new Doctor. That would be awesome. I and mean, I think we need more of that. I'm actually... Um, I'm actually talking about a whole new regeneration. <laughs> and there was no shade on Rachel Talley either. I think she's an absolute rock star. So it was shot the way it was shot. I just I just know what I wish for. And that's okay, I think. So the next one on my list actually kind of comes after. In fact, it comes directly after, yeah. <laughs> so this is the one that is between Sylvester McCoy going in to Paul McGann, which I feel like I might have to explain a little bit because it is quite far down on this list. Now, to be honest, I mean, it screams TV movie, doesn't it? And I know that that's by design. But I'm talking about, you know, the fact that the guy in the morgue, or whatever it's called, is watching Frankenstein on TV and the lights are flickering and it's spooky and it's scary and it's meant to be a bit of an eerie feel. I mean, I have seen people not exactly rave about this one and... I kind of understand, but part of me quite likes it. I mean, none of these regenerations are awful or bad or anything like that. It's more just that there is definitely an order to them, in my opinion. But, you know, it's cheesy, it's camp, it's dramatic. It's exactly what I kind of like in Doctor Who, and I think that it screams Doctor Who, to be honest. And I can imagine that scene absolutely scaring the living daylights out of me as a child. Maybe it's just because I've watched it as an adult that I don't really... Adult? Adult? ignore that <laughs> but maybe it's because I've watched it when I'm older <laughs> we'll go with um that I've not really enjoyed or appreciated the sentiment what I did love though was the fact that Sylvester McCoy came back to hand the reins to Paul Baguette it was great to see him in it and it was great to actually see a proper spooky regeneration if I had a sort of nitpick it would be more you know sort of why why did the regeneration take so long but maybe that was explained in the movie and I just missed it. I mean, it has been years since I watched it, so... Yeah, that's, that would probably explain it. But this is where it's placed, so yeah, unfortunately. Number 13. Number 12 on the list. Kind of, kind of get into it now, because these are ones that I really don't think about. It's just personal opinion. Very different regeneration than what we've seen before and previously. Oh, hello. What was that? And this is the one between John Hurt and going into Christopher Eccleston. So the War Doctor into the Ninth Doctor. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think the late, great John Hurt did a fabulous job as, you know, well, he's one of the greatest actors that has ever lived, so why would he not? But what I did love about that whole regeneration is it, it's a different kind because he regenerated, because he completed his mission. Does that make sense? He'd completed his purpose in the best way and that's why it triggered i don't know if it's because the sisterhood of khan were the ones to i'm getting into another regeneration but i get i think it's maybe because they had something to do with it they knew that it was for a purpose and that he was sort of on borrowed time anyway so it was just for it was just going to be for that incarnation and then once the job's done in however way he needed to do it then it was time to it was time to change it was time to move on i think even at the time he says uh that makes a lot of sense. And then he's into Christopher Eccleston. But yeah, I, I just, I remember, what I do remember anyway, is when I watched it live and I was praying to all of the gods that may be up there that Christopher Eccleston could have done a cameo for like five minutes, not two minutes, ten seconds. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have been great to have seen him back again. But I get it, you know, and they, I get why he didn't. And it was nice to have that sort of nod to him anyway by you know, a bit of CGI in there, changing his face, it was, it was nice, oh, it's just, this is the epitome, I am the epitome of a Doctor Who fan, I'm always wanting more, <laughs> that's probably what it was, but what I also loved about that is that it sort of tied up regenerations, well, it tied all the regenerations up into a point, until 
Series 12 of New Who came along and then it all got screwed up completely. But I um, wonder what I could be possibly referring to in that. But you know what? I'm going to be getting into another whole different section. So I'll just leave that there. So this is where they sit at number 12. It was good though. I liked it. Next on the list at number 11 is one that I was actually really struggling to place. I didn't know where to put it because it's such a different kind of regeneration. A bit like John Hurt's one actually. But it was it's so bizarre so I didn't know where to put it as I say. But I have decided at number 11 is Patrick Troughton to John Pertwee. So the second Doctor into the third Doctor. And the reason being is because it is so different. And that doesn't make it bad or anything like that. It's more just, it's the only one that was done in a different way, transitionally, I mean. And what I mean by that is it wasn't a fade from one face to the other. You know, it wasn't a glowing light. You could genuinely see. And just because people are going to say, oh, what about the TV movie though, Shaw? You missed that one out. Well, that was also a transition of going from one face to another. You get where I'm going with this, right? And to be honest, it was probably the darkest one out of the lot. And I do appreciate that, you know, it is only the second time that they've done this. So there was no really set schedule on what a regeneration should or could look like. And I appreciate that it was at the time that it was as well. But what I love is that it is the second Doctor who is, in my opinion anyway, his whole thing is talking himself out of stuff. You know, having people believe he's not as smart as he actually is or making sure people underestimate him so that when his plan does come together he's always got a nace up his sleeve and brings it out at the last minute he can't do that here he's with other time lords that are probably just as smart as him and know exactly what he's about and the time lords are basically like oh, we're not having this mate just get on with it you're being punished this is the deal <laughs> and it's more the fact that they start off by giving him the choice and he's trying to talk himself out of, or at least trying to talk them out of them giving him that sentence. And it's just the way that he rejects every single one before they just sort of say, well, fine, we'll make it random for you then. And then it's the face movements for me. And then the fact that he goes off spinning, like they force him into it. And it's just kind of, it's kind of creepy. And like I say, it's a little bit dark. And although I like it, that is why it is at the lower end of this list anyway, at number 11. And just as a little footnote, I'd love to add that if you have seen that regeneration and you probably think it's kind of on the lower end of your own personal ranking, that's fine. But what I would recommend is to click a link that I have popped in the description, I really hope they don't mind, um, of a remake of the Second Doctor's regeneration. It is so fab and it's been watched by so many people. It is really wonderful. So click that link below. But don't do it yet. Wait until this um wait until this video's over <laughs> and then do it. Open it in another tab if you need to to watch later. But I definitely recommend it. It's, it's oh it's just awesome. This one is probably gonna get me in a little bit of trouble, but it's um it's my list. <laughs> so comment away if you want to. It's not gonna be a great one for classic fans especially fans of this particular doctor like my stepdad he wouldn't like the what i'm about to say at all but for number 10 it is tom baker into peter davison so fourth doctor into the fifth ah oh, so the tom baker one i am um, if i'm being honest it's the one where i didn't feel the most what's the word i wasn't that bothered by it and I don't know if that was the idea back in Classic Who, but I just, yeah. Uh, uh, all the other ones I've been sort of a bit like, oh, that's a bit sad, or that's a bit disappointing, or that's exciting, but I just didn't really get that for this. I mean, I know that regeneration usually happens when the Doctor's dead or near death, or there's some bizarre reason that I can't quite think of right now. And it's the first time that the Watcher appears. I think the first and only, actually. But yeah, the first time that the Watcher appears who I think is so creepy anyway never liked that guy at all whether he was the doctor the whole time or not it just was not my cup of tea whatsoever so again it's a completely different kind of regeneration and that's fine but what I really actually liked because I know that I've kind of just said oh I didn't really feel anything but it is on the higher end of this no it's not actually it's not on the higher end at all Charlotte I just obviously don't know how numbers work <laughs> 
God, you can tell it's getting late. But it is the first time that the Doctor sort of starts seeing companions and people he's met and, you know, those voices come into him, have him think about what he's done since his... or during, sorry, his tenure and where the Doctor's life seems to flash or all of his lives seem to flash before his eyes. So it's um it's nice to have that and I think that that's where this sort of tradition happened because it does come up in future ones as well. But I think this is where it all started properly. So... Yeah, it's um, it's a nice one. It's not my favourite. It's not one that I feel any sort of tie to, to be honest. As much as I love Tom Baker and his, uh, his portrayal of the Doctor, I just wasn't. Yeah, that's just it's it's place where it's place. It's number ten. All right, so number nine, and that one is something that comes from a short that I absolutely love, but I'm not here to get all giddy about that. So this is where. Paul McGann goes into John Hurt or transforms into John Hurt. More specifically, it's where Eight regenerates into the War Doctor. And I think it's more that I just really like the concept of the fact that the Doctor is quite content with the idea of dying. Like He's okay, but he's over this war. He's tired of people dying because of this war. He just wants it done. And if that means that he has to die, then that's absolutely fine by him. And it's almost like, you know, he's um, he's actually a bit peeved that the Sisterhood of Khan have intervened with that. Even mocks them, you know, it, when they try and talk about what they do. And I think he says, keepers of the flame of utter boredom or something like that. And she says, no, eternal life. And he goes, that's the one. Like, you know, I just like that they have that sort of back and forth. So there's that lovely bit of humour in there, but it still doesn't distract us from what's actually going on, the severity of the situation that the Doctor's in and the whole of the universe at the time. You know, it's one of those where you still understand that there's a lot going on here and it's just, oh, it's just, it's a great one. I love it so much. And I really like that he actually gets a choice of who he wants to be because I think it's a really pivotal moment where the Doctor goes from being the Doctor and I know it's very obvious and it's very clearly written, you know, about what he wants to be. But I think it's more the fact that the Doctor made a conscious choice to renounce that Doctor title completely and become this warrior and i think it's more because he wants to feel something even pain he says you know is it gonna hurt and the top dog there i can't remember her name for the life of me but i really like her says that it will and you know he's like oh good and it's i think it genuinely is because he wants to feel that he wants to feel something again but you know to go back to when i said about him mocking them and they're having this sort of slinging match between each other and Sister Lucana just I don't care mate like just regenerate we don't want to hear any of this just stop being stubborn and help us with this my only nitpick and I suppose it's quite a big nitpick actually is that we have the war doctor and that's no shade on John Hurt whatsoever I really like him or I liked him as an actor it, it just it had to be Christopher Eccleston for me do you know what it didn't have to be Christopher Eccleston I didn't even want him to regenerate at all I wanted him to stay as the eighth doctor and uh, to see him alongside chris oh so chris ruckerson again matt smith and david tennant i think they would have been electric together so yeah that's that's my nitpick so i just think that Moffat missed a bit of a trick there by thinking that having a bigger name would be better because as much as i like john hurt as i've said it would have made perfect sense for paul mcgann to have done it but I guess we'll never know. All right, so here's one that actually really surprised myself and I can't believe it placed here, but when I did a bit of juggling and, you know, I was really going through it, I, it just had to be here. So at number eight, I still can't believe this is where it's placed, is Matt Smith transforming into Peter Capaldi. 11 and 12, I genuinely cannot believe it. I think it's more because of the whole... There's a few reasons, actually. And I, I genuinely am so shocked. He is my favourite Doctor. Like, Matt Smith is my Doctor. Eleven is... I just... No one beats him for me. So I genuinely was so surprised. And it wasn't even because he regenerated. Like, that would be an even more valid reason than why it's placed here. And it was the first regeneration to introduce a new Doctor through a sneeze. I mean, it was so violent and so quick. I, I don't know whether I liked it or not, to be quite honest. Every time I watch it, I'm always confused about whether it was a great idea. It, uh, yeah, it, I mean, that is the least of 
why it's placed where it's placed. And don't get me wrong, the regeneration was beautiful and sad and emotional and I didn't want to say goodbye to him. But, the, yeah, okay, here's the first reason. So the first reason is I didn't want to see Amy back and I adored Amy. She was one of my favourite companions. She doesn't be my top one, but she is one. She's definitely in... She's in my top five, I'll give her that. So I didn't want to see her back. I didn't really see the point. I guess it was a bit of fan service, a bit of sentimental. bit of a sentimental thing. I'm not sure. But if I'm to be completely honest, it's because of the speech. And don't get me wrong, the speech isn't bad. The words aren't bad. In fact, I think that it was a lovely speech. It was, it was one that I can quote word for word. However... He'd just done a massive speech before then. So what we had was a great emotional speech to another great emotional speech, pretty much alongside each other, one after the other. And it was a bit much. You know, it was just a little bit too much for me. And I'm really sad that this is at number eight, but it it is just where it placed. I, I yeah. All right then, we're at the halfway point, number seven, and I am still surprised about where this place. I actually thought this was going to be a lot lower, but upon reflection, I thought it was it was quite right that it was here. So this is where William Hartnell goes from being the first Doctor to going into the second Doctor as Patrick Troughton. What a risk, first of all to think that that would be a good idea of course it paid off and i'm absolutely you know over the moon that it did or else i wouldn't wouldn't be sitting here today you know chewing your ear off about it but it was one where i think i liked it because there was no fanfare you know i'm sure and i mean i've never asked my granddad i really should i don't know if he'd remember but to see that happen for the first time must have been bizarre in the best way you know to see an actor go into a different actor but playing the same character. But yeah, I loved it. It was quite a seamless transition, you know, fade from one face into another. For the time, it it was wonderful. I think actually it's probably a better effect than what we've had since then. I, I'm, I'm all for it. And it's a very short and sweet one, this one. But yeah, halfway point, number seven, I, I, th- I think it's well placed. Even though I was confused about it, I think it's definitely the right place for it. Okay, so it's starting to get a little bit difficult now, but in at number six is one that I think is really sweet, actually. It's one of the nicest, but still emotional regenerations. And that is from John Pertwee transforming into Tom Baker. So the third Doctor into the fourth. Oh, I I think it was great. So it was a nice, sweet one. You know, Sarah Jane, the Brigadier are there. And it's, it's great to have a companion there. I know that it's happened since, but just up until that point, it hasn't. So it was nice to have that and to have Sarah Jane be the substitute of just all these emotions going through her head to the point where she's just like, what the hell is going on? And then that being, I cannot remember the name of it, but that was probably the kind of a nitpick for me. I just don't get it. I didn't really get it. And that's kind of my bad. But I think that that was actually the whole point of it. I mean, even at some point, I think the Brigadier says to Sarah Jane, who is that? And she tries to pronounce his name and that she just kind of can't so the brigadier's like thank you that makes everything quite clear (laughs) so even the brigadier's doing that so i don't think i'm that far off the mark with the confusion but it was great to have an explanation from that being about what regeneration was and what it meant because we hadn't really had it explained before about what happens during that so it was nice to have that for the audience for me even though I got into classic way after new. It was nice to sort of have that as a first, even though I knew what it was already. Like, it was nice to have that from the classic era. To be like, this is what happens to the Doctor when he's near death and he's on his way out. A new one will come come along and all the all his cells will, re, um, will regenerate. And I think his words were, he'll become a new man. And it was it was lovely. I, I really liked it. it. If I'm being honest, I don't know why it's placed here. I don't know why it's at number six. I think it is just because I liked the other ones more. So, yeah. And there's good reasons for it because if any of you have been keeping track so far, there'll be a couple where you're probably thinking, sure, why have you placed them as high? But I do think I've got good reason then. At least I hope I do anyway. 
We'll find out, we'll find out. So for number five, God, we're so close to the end, but for number five, it's kind of fitting that it is the fifth doctor transforming into the sixth doctor. So again, it was a completely different kind of regeneration that I'd witnessed when I was going through Classic Co. And that is purely because, I mean, we had the, you know, companions coming back, but it was more because the doctor was almost ready to die completely. You know, he, I think he even said, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it to the next one, to be fair to you, Perry, you know, m maybe not those exact words. I'm kind of paraphrasing. But then almost having the companions come to encourage him and then have a different kind of encouragement when the master shows his face and is telling him to die and it's almost like, the doctor resisting what the master says i really enjoyed it and to be honest perry witnessing as well as such a kind-hearted sweet doctor transform and the first thing you get with the sixth doctor is kind of outright arrogance for one of a for one of a better word i was going to say something else but i didn't <laughs> but the arrogance of him and I think that that was quite a shock to her. And to me, actually, upon upon the watch. But I know I'm not really meant to, you know, talk about the episode or the story that the regeneration comes from. But it's such a good story as well. And it was just such a great end to a great story. So although I'm really happy with that and I quite liked the regeneration, it's actually quite an exciting one more than anything. I think it's just because I've got my doctor, you know, but I don't know what's coming so it's nice to it's nice to have that where i can just sort of enjoy it with with knowing what's going to happen and to be excited about it i love that so i know for a fact there's going to be some of you out there some of my friends especially thinking shaw why on earth have you not mentioned this one yet well now it's time <laughs> so next on the list at number four and i genuinely well you all know why i've placed it this high if you know me at all or if you don't know me then welcome you're about to find out why i've placed it this high but it is the regeneration from jody whittaker to david tennant again <laughs> this is the regeneration from the 13th doctor to the 14th doctor and my god there's only one reason why. I mean, actually, there's a couple of reasons. I, I am going to give it its dues. It was beautifully shot. You know, uh, finally, I got a regeneration outside of the TARDIS, which hasn't happened in New Who before. And I've been asking for it for such a long time. So someone heard me um, and I was really glad to see it. It was beautifully shot. The music was great. I genuinely, genuinely liked the music. I thought that it was really fitting. It was a peaceful regeneration. There was no drama, which I also liked about this regeneration. But we'll get on to why it was dramatic soon, because I know I'm about to contradict myself and you're thinking, what? Quite literally. To be quite honest with you, I, I didn't really like her last words. I mean, it might sound a bit, I don't know, it may, maybe just because I'm not a fan of 13, probably is the reason why I'm being a bit harsh on that. Or maybe why people probably think I'm being harsh on that. But actually, do you know what? I guess it kind of fits in with her character, the whole tag you're it. You know, 13 seems to have this bit of a bit of a childlike wonder about her, which is um which is quite nice and cute, but it's not really the doctor to me. So uh, for that, I just didn't really like her last words, in all fairness. But then <laughs> the clothes start changing and the face starts changing and the hair starts changing and I remember watching it live and my jaw hitting the floor when I saw it, that rhymed, when I saw it happen I watched it with my mum and I remember we both just were like huh or oh, actually what would have been more appropriate was what <laughs> with a couple of extra words at the end of that that I won't repeat on here from both of us and I still actually can't get over it I still can't quite believe that this is happening you know that it's come back as to how or why of course we don't know yet I have my own personal theories but um I actually talk about those with 
There we go, just putting a little plug in there, like a little surprise for you. I actually talk about that with Jack from the Nerd Den. I will be popping the link to his channel and our little chat that we had below here. I've done a couple with him. He is an absolute scream and drops some bangers like you wouldn't believe. So make sure you go and check that out. But that sounds like I had a, that, that sounds like I'm sponsoring him or like I have a sponsor. We don't, we don't sponsor each other. We're just good mates. <laughs> but that is the reason why it is at number four. I just, oh, it was great. And you know what? It was, it was a nice enough regeneration for her to end on. I liked it. I liked it. And that's why it's at number four. If you ask me tomorrow, it will probably change like all of the other ones that I've done so far. But for now, it's at number four and I'm happy with where it is. Okay, so at number three, top three, I'm loving this. So far, I'm thinking that my rankings have been a little bit surprising. I've, I've been surprised myself, but these three, I do actually believe are pretty special. They're, they're, they're pretty much the ones that I love so top tier top tier ranking for the top three these don't change very often either maybe the top two inch change a little bit but never they they don't really go any further than than these three basically stay as these three so number three is from the ninth doctor into the tenth doctor so christopher eccleston in to david tennant this was my first ever regeneration, my first experience. I had no idea what was going on, but that's what makes it so, so good. I mean, blimey, it was sad and RTD understood the assignment and made it perfect, as did Christopher Eccleston as well. They smashed this out of the park and so did Billy Piper, actually. All three of them did this so, so much justice. And I'll tell you why as well. Because I remember watching it and thinking, I, I, I do not want you to go. This is not a good idea. Like, you're so good and you're my doctor. Even though it was the only doctor I'd experienced, I genuinely didn't think anyone was going to be able to do this any better than him. But what I liked is that he was so nonchalant almost about it. You know, I think it was more to try and protect Rose more than anything, with Rose being a great substitute for the audience as well and sort of being like but what's what's going on because that's kind of how I was and I'm sure a lot of people that had watched a regeneration for the first time that's how they were too so for him to explain it so beautifully and you know for it to be when he says every cell in my body's dying like I said it wasn't it wasn't even like it was that much of a bigger deal but every cell in my body's dying and then Rory says well can't you do something he goes yeah I'm doing it now like it's nothing like it is just nothing and then the way it's explained you know time lords have this little trick sort of a way of cheating death but it means I'm going to change like it was perfect like nail on the head thank you for explaining it I understand it I still don't want it to happen but fair I am, um, yeah, I loved that regeneration. And I, when I go back and watch it, I'm still like, oh, I don't want you to leave us. But the first time I watched it and when he changed into David Tennant, I remember thinking, well, I'm not watching this anymore. He's not going to be any good. And then I think when he says, now then, where was I? Barcelona. And he gives that smile. I was like, he hasn't even got the right smile. God, I was such a bratty 10 year old, but I really didn't like him. And boy do I love being proved wrong oh, man oh to go back to that time god I'm talking like I'm 50 or something it's absolutely fine no offense to 50 year olds but I like it that's why I like Doctor Who in general I can just I can still be a kid with it and it's great but yeah no you know 10 20 minute long speech no what's the word I'm looking for but no but no massive fanfare you know it was literally explain the regeneration, tell Rose how great she was, or fantastic, and then one last fantastic from him, and then bam, it's done. I just, I, I liked it. Simple, sweet, straight to the point, boom. Bada bing, bada boom, done. Oh, God, I love it. And now I'm going to completely contradict myself with the one that has made itself to number two on this list and the reason I'm going to be contradicting myself is because I've just said how much I love it when there's no fanfare but this was deserved. Peter Capaldi transforming into Jodie Whittaker so number 12 into number 13 for a variety of reasons and I feel like it's going to take a while so I'm going to keep it short 
or shorter than um, <laughs> shorter than what I think it will be anyway. So I know I've said before that I don't really like all the speeches. I think I said that about Matt Smith's regeneration earlier, and that's why it rated low. But this is a situation where it works, you know, because there was a whole process to this. And Peter Capaldi, along with Rachel Talalay and Stephen Moffat, did an incredible job with this. Like, I loved this regeneration. Because it was so heartfelt and it was the contrast between him, you know, refusing to change and not wanting to change. And, you know, him, him rather dying than changing. That was a big thing. And then to go from that to going, do you know what? One last go. And the words in his speech, to have it directed at the next doctor was a stroke of genius. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was a great thing to do. No one's ever done that before. So it was nice to have that and to go through, you know, a couple of comic moments, you know, like never eat pears. And it just, it was more of a, it was more of a wonder to listen to him. I mean, the guy has pulled off complete blinder when it comes to him doing monologuing and he, or even being the solo actor with a speaking part <laughs> anyway that completely takes an episode in his stride and smashes it this is also a part of it where he can talk and say the most wonderful things and I listen every single time with such intent like my eyes are glued to the screen I can't take my eyes off him during this regeneration and it was everything even down to the hair that he had when he's got his fluff I love it and you know just the whole the the music is great I remember every single note of it the speech and then at the end with the doctor I let you go like it was brilliant and I just adored it because it was more than just the doctor saying it it was Peter Capaldi saying it and it was Stephen Moffat saying it and it just held that little bit more weight and maybe I am the most sentimental fool on the planet but I just oh it's one that just makes me so happy and that I will I rewatch Doctor Falls all the time in fact it wasn't the Doctor Falls my god twice upon a time nice recovery there <laughs> but this is why it's placed at number two i just yeah it's wonderful i think with some regenerations it's just about how you feel when you watch them you know and the transition from 12 to 13 was great but i remember when you saw his face change into hers or we saw it anyway and i remember you know when it went all quiet whilst the doctor reaches for the monitor and finds out that she's now a woman. I remember holding my breath and thinking, come on, Jodie, this is the most important moment. It's your first moment on screen as a doctor. Make it a good one. And you know what? I'm not a 13 fan, but I think she did a really good job. She was completely on her own. It was a moment in history. It had to be good. And I honestly do think she delivered. Credit where credit's due. You did good. So if you have been keeping track, then you'll know who number one is already. But I genuinely might spend forever talking about this one. So I'll try and keep it to the point. And it is my number one pick. <sighs> From David Tennant, transforming into Matt Smith's Doctor. So 10 into number 11. Oh, boy. If you want a regeneration that is going to hit you on every kind of emotion that you have, this is the one. I could, I still watch it and I still sort of hold my breath a little bit and think, oh my God, it's happening, it's happening. You know, to the point where Vale Desum starts playing and I'm just thinking, oh my God, I'm like, I know what's coming and I know that actually who's coming is going to turn out to be my favourite doctor. But it's still so emotional. And do you know what I love more than anything? Even though we had the fanfare of him doing a sort of like farewell lap. That's fine. Or lap of honour. I can't, I don't know how, what you call it. And him going into the TARDIS, walking off, seeing that Ood, walking off, getting into the TARDIS and having, just putting her in flight. And not a single word is spoken while that gorgeous music is playing I, oh, I just every time I watch it it doesn't lessen it 
for me, it doesn't lessen the emotion for me. Everything is so spot on. And then to the point where the camera zooms into his face and he just says, I don't want to go. <laughs> who knew five words were going to set a whole fandom alight? Not me. And I remember screaming at the TV. I think it was, <laughs> I think it was my parents. And he said it. And we were like, we don't want you to go either. <laughs> we just didn't want it to happen. And I just think the beauty of the music, the, be the beauty of the acting, he acted his socks off, man. It was just so heartbreaking. I mean, I know I'm not supposed to talk about the episodes or anything like that, but it's kind of relevant. Because in that episode, he says to Wolf, it feels like dying. Like some new man goes swanning away. And it's perfect because it hits that note perfectly. You know, you do genuinely think, my God, this feel this guy feels like he's dying so I just feel everything in that and I can't really pick fault I mean if I had to nitpick it would probably be the fact that he trashes the TARDIS during the regeneration I mean I know why they did it you know they wanted to build a new one for Matt and that's fine maybe in fact you know what maybe I'm trying to think of one. Maybe it's a bit too self-indulgent. Maybe it's a little bit too, you know, self-congratulatory. It's a bit of a pat on the back. But at the end of the day, I don't really care about that. It's the end of an era for not just David Tennant, but for RTD, Julie Gardner, the whole of the crew. It, it moved on. So I think that it's it deserves a bit of a pass, but it's just perfect. I... For, for a regeneration, basically, that I have watched as many times as I have, as I'm sure a lot of you have, for it to still hit me in the same way, that takes some doing. I am completely on board with where I've placed this, so that is my number one pick, and I'm very happy about it, <laughs> to be honest. But, as always, it is not just about me, it is also about you, so what are your picks? Which, In fact, you don't have to give me your whole 14, that would be ridiculous, and I wouldn't expect it, but please feel free to do so if you want to, and I will respond to you in the comments um, for making such an effort. But even if you want to pick your most, I don't know, your, your worst one, or your best one, or your favourite, or your most emotional all the good stuff that's fine please feel free to do so again like comment subscribe it really really helps and i am so so happy with the support i've been getting so thank you guys so much for that <sighs> i'll take a breath now because i think i ran through that so quickly because i didn't want it to be such a long video for you so i'm kind of kind of pleased with that <laughs> while i'm here though i always like to make sure I mention it. So I am a regular member of the Type 40 podcast as well, where we talk about things, all, all manner of things actually, all about Doctor Who in any capacity. And it's always just a nice chat about Doctor Who, about our favourite show where we can all just geek out and have a good old, you know, good old chinwag about what we, uh, what we love about it so much. So always a good thing to do, uh, usually on Mondays and Thursdays, mostly Thursdays. In fact, it's every Thursday. Who am I kidding? Unless unless we decide to take a little break but yeah go and check that out i'll pop their link below as well so you can find me on there also i am on twitter and instagram so or twitter or x or whatever you call it so i'll pop the links to them if you don't want to that's 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 fine as well i guess i'm not very good at selling myself am i hmm. i suppose i'll just end it there <laughs> so take care of yourselves stay super safe and super well and i will see you very very soon